Hello and welcome to the Understanding by Design Stage 2 tutorial. In this tutorial, we will discuss how to properly plan and list assessments for a UBD core curriculum course. Our learning objectives for this tutorial are 1. To outline how to properly align the unit's essential questions, transfer goals, meanings, and acquisition goals to assessments. 2. To develop performance tasks and assessments using the GRASPS model. 3. To distinguish high order assessments from ancillary assessment tasks. And 4. To create robust feedback within the framework of a rubric. The first goal of Stage 2 is to design performance tasks that use higher level thinking to demonstrate that students are adequately developing an understanding of the desired results of the unit. First, the codes for the desired results should be typed into the left hand column. These codes should be drawn from the Transfer, Essential Questions, and Understanding section of the Stage 1 form. In this case, the desired goals are Transfer number 1, 3, 4, Essential Question number 1, and Understanding number 1 and 3. Next, the second column should include a brief description of the assessment. This description should follow the GRASPS development model. G-R-A-S-P-S -S stands for Goals, Role, Audience, Situation, Product Purpose, and Standards. Designing assessment around these categories will frame assessments in a way that is uniform and digestible for the students. Further, this model makes the expectations for the assessments clear and helps students understand exactly what tasks they must complete and the method they should use to complete them. In this example, the students are asked to role play the legal advisor of King Edward III of England at the outset of the Hundred Years' War. Their goal is to justify a declaration of war against France to Edward. Their audience is the medieval King Edward himself and a group of medieval English nobility. The situation is Edward's imminent need for a response to the French king's move against Edward's territory in Gascony, which necessitates persuading the English nobility to quickly prepare for war. The product will be a written letter and a short oral presentation. Lastly, the standards are that the student's argument should be well-researched, plausible, and represent the perspective of a 14th century medieval noble. The third column in this section is used to discuss the various criteria that will be used to assess the performance tasks. In Stage 2, assessment criteria should be part of one of four main categories, impact, content, quality, and process. Impact denotes the overall success of the tasks. Did the student accomplish the goal of the assignment? Content refers to how well the student incorporated required material into the product. Quality indicates the overall organization, style, performance, or other mechanical elements of the product. Lastly, process indicates the way in which the student accomplished the goal. How did he or she put together their final result? It is important to understand that not every assignment needs to be assessed with all four categories of criteria. In this case, the student will be evaluated by the impact. Did their presentation make a good cause for war? Content. Was their argument supported by a knowledge of both lecture material and outside research? And quality. Did the written portion of the assignment follow proper formal conventions of style and grammar, and was the oral presentation delivered confidently and clearly? The next section of the Stage 2 form is for listing the ancillary evidence of student performance that will be assessed in the unit. This section should include learning tools such as quizzes or discussions that will help the student retain and understand information, but that are not designed to impart specific transfer goals. These assessments should be used as part of the learning process with guidance from the instructor and should be differentiated from the higher level performance tasks that demonstrate deeper understanding and that require independent application of knowledge and skills. Lastly, the final section of this form is used to develop a grading rubric. An effective grading rubric should provide a clear set of expectations for students before they attempt to fulfill their performance tasks. Further, the rubric should be clear enough to give excellent feedback to the students once their assignment has been assessed. The rubric will often have several criteria, in this case the rubric has five, and will be graded along several levels. Here, four categories ranging from exemplary to no evidence of understanding. Rubrics can be further nuanced by weighting the criterion differently, depending on the focus of the assignment. As an example, the first criterion for the assignment is impact, which is being given a 30% weight towards the final score. 
An exemplary level of impact would be having a product that is persuasive and represents an interesting and insightful analysis of unit content and research. Lastly, students who give novel explanations and defend their perspective well demonstrate exemplary effort. In contrast, a performance task that needs revision would be almost completely narrative or unoriginal and would not adequately fulfill the goal of the assignment. Further, a submission in need of revision may be disorganized and the student's own perspective too subtle or obscured under merely reciting the lecture or textbook materials. Each of the criterion should contain the same detailed level of feedback to both guide students as they work and to correct errors to improve performance on future assessments. Thank you for watching the Stage 2 tutorial on how to determine acceptable evidence in a UBD unit.